Hi there. <laughs> My name is Mark Chi, um, and I am a lecturer at the School of Computer Science and Engineering here at UNSW. Well, when I say here, <laughs> not all of us are at UNSW right now. A lot of us are in our own homes, but UNSW exists in our hearts. <laughs> so, just wanted to say hi. Um, if you're a student who is coming into UNSW and will be in a, uh, what are they, bioinformatics, computer engineering, software engineering, or computer science degree, I will quite likely be the first lecturer that you come in contact with. Um, I teach a course called uh, Comp 1511. Don't worry about the codes, you'll learn about the codes later. But the title of the course is Programming Fundamentals. Um, and it's more than just programming fundamentals, it's really computer science fundamentals. Um, so you're probably going to meet me very early on in your degree. I wanted to record a little bit of a video today just to talk about what it means to study computer science, or what it means to even work in computing, and um, what it might mean to you to come join us at UNSW and, and learn about computing here. So I like to think about working with computers as thinking about the computer as as a tool right so over the course of humanity's development we've developed lots of different tools and and a lot of them might be um, simple things that are fit for a a single purpose so best example I got right here I got this trusty chair that I'm sitting in. So we could consider the chair to be a tool. I mean, it's kind of furniture, so it's, it's not quite exactly. But either way, it still has a purpose. It's supporting my butt while I'm sitting here, and it's making me comfortable. And I spend hours in this thing, right? I lecture in this chair, and I do a lot of my, my admin work here as well. Um, it has a specific purpose, and we use it for its specific purpose. But one of the really interesting things about uh, computers is that they are also tools but they're not necessarily tools with one specific purpose so in terms of what we as humanity have created we have created something that can be used as a tool for many different purposes so I've got one here right now you can't see it because it's like down here on the camera but it's my laptop and my laptop is uh, recording uh, what I'm saying at the moment, it's recording the video of me, it's also got my little script here so I can remember what I'm going to say and stuff, but I've got, I've got other computers. Right, I've got this other computer here that's telling me how many minutes I've gone for to make sure I stay within my time limit. That's not the only purpose for this thing. Right? Uh, I've got this one here, people are going to love this one, it's one of my favourites. Um, this one entertains me when I'm bored, um, gives me a break from work every now and then and stuff. Well, I think one of the most interesting things about these bits and pieces that I'm showing you is that when it boils down to it, when you go down into the nitty gritty of what these devices actually do, they're nearly identical. Underneath it all, what they are is a system that, that, that takes some kind of instructions and processes them. Um, it's a system that can contain certain knowledge that we can then get back out of it and things like that. Um, but the beauty of it is I, I've got like a phone, a computer that's doing video recording, a games machine. They're all computers, but they're all things that we can work with and that someone, some human somewhere has actually put together all of the information for how each of these things should function. And each of them is performing a wildly different task right now. Uh, but that's the power of uh, the configurable machine that is the computer. So one of the things that, that we love doing is, um, is, is being able to work with our computer to allow it to, um, uh, to perform different tasks. So one of the things that we're always going to, to start off with is thinking about how we actually communicate with a computer. So if we want a computer to, to, to change what it's doing, we need to be able to communicate with it, which means we need some form of shared understanding. Right here and now, um, myself, and I'm not sure how many people are watching this right now, but whoever's watching this right now, we have a shared understanding, right? I'm speaking a language that we know as English. Uh, and uh, a lot of people spend a lot of time learning 
how to speak and how to understand English. And so we've gotten to the point where pretty much everything that I'm saying is going into your brains and forming ideas in your brains. And you're like, okay, good. We have this communication so we can share ideas between ourselves. Um, at the moment, if we try to speak English to our computers, uh, we have a mixed response. <laughs> If I say to certain computers, uh, okay, Google something, or Siri, do something for me, or Alexa, uh, listen in on everything that's happening in my house. <laughs> that is going to happen, right? Um, but those machines that can process English to a certain um, level are not really getting to the point where we could... Um, just speak in English to something like OK Google or Siri or something like that and, and get it to the point where it can create an island full of cute animals that are going to run around and like buy turnips and things like that. But um, what we need is a shared language that both us and the computers can genuinely understand. And so English isn't really going to work for us. So what we're going to use is these things called programming languages. And I think a lot of people already know a bit about programming languages. Because when we talk about computer science, that's often one of the first things that comes up. I mean, it's one of the first things that came up in this talk as well, right? What we do when we're working with programming languages is we're finding a bridge between ourselves and the computers. We're finding a way of speaking. It's not really speaking because most of it's typing, but you know, I like to think of it as us talking to our computers and talking to our computers in a language that we understand and they understand. And that's the, the beauty of these programming languages. And when you consider how long it took each of us to learn how to speak, understand, and read English, um, I, w I would say, I don't know, it's not exactly the case, but we're, we're looking at years minimum um, in, in our development, maybe maybe 10 years to be really, really quite proficient with English. Um, you can obviously do it in less time than that. Um, and we're going to be doing the same kind of thing with programming languages. We're going to be teaching you how to translate your ideas of what you want the computer to do into a language the computer can understand and so that way you'll actually have in a sense this conversation with your computer you'll have the ability to say to your computer i would like you to perform these kinds of tasks i've laid out how these tasks are going to work um and this is how um uh, this is how we're going to, to make this happen. So that's one of the things that we're going to be doing in computer science. But I want to say that that is not the most important thing in computer science. I know, I know that's a weird thing to say for someone who's literally going to be teaching you that <laughs> thing first, which is the ability to communicate with your computer. It's important to be able to do that. Um, but one of the other things that we're going to learn is that it's not just about communicating with computers. As I said before, computers are a tool. Tools are used to solve problems. Tools are used to extend our capabilities as humans. So one of the most important things that we do in computer science is the idea of engineering. So the school is called the School of Computer Science and Engineering. And I like to roll those things in together. Um, I like to understand that a lot of the computer science we're doing is going to involve engineering as well. And engineering is the idea that we look out in the world and we see human problems and we try to solve them. So we try to build tools to solve problems that humans have. And so we're going to teach you a lot about that. We're going to teach you about the idea that there is no program that we're making that isn't intended for our use in some way. Um, we haven't hit a point yet where we're, where, where we're writing computer programs um, necessarily just for computers to be better. We're still thinking about this human perspective on things. We haven't bowed down entirely to the robot overlords just yet. <laughs> but when we write any kind of computer programs, any kind of software, we have the idea that we need a reason for this thing to exist. And the reason is often going to be we look out into the world and we say, here are the problems, here are the difficulties that there are in the world. Uh, what are we going to do to make things easier? What are we going to do to make the world a better place? And and this is a question that we really need to ask. And we need to ask it well and we need to be able to answer it. So we need to say, what are the problems we're going to solve? 
how do we think we're going to solve those problems? Because it's not easy, you know, to decide how a computer is going to help you solve a problem somewhere else. It's, it's, it's kind of a long process that involves looking at all the people that are going to be affected by uh, the software that we create and then saying, okay, how do we make all these people's lives better with this software? And, and some people came, I'm going to keep bringing this on because it's so much fun, right? Some people came up with a way to just make our, our, our free time more enjoyable. Um, some people came up with another device which is very helpful for us to stay in contact with each other and things. But as we can see in the world around us today, we have thrown out a whole lot of solutions to possible problems that have ended up causing more problems. So there's a lot of technology that we've created which is um, making life more difficult in some ways. And so we need to think about what is the difference there and how are we going to put these things together. And that is the engineering side of things. We're going to teach you a lot about that as well. Um, a lot about not just communicating with your computer, but also thinking about why are you writing these programs? What are you writing them for? How are they going to solve problems? And what are the problems you're trying, you're trying to solve? So we can look at this as like a high level, low level thing. At the low level, we learned how to speak to our computers. That means we have the capability to get our computers to reconfigure themselves to, to solve problems. And then the other side of it is thinking about what are these problems and what are we trying to do to solve them? So this is this this is the journey that we're going to take you on. The journey is that you and your computer are going to work together to do something. Um, you're going to be linked in a way to your computer in that you're going to use your computers as tools to solve problems, but you're going to use your computers in a way that you're always going to be changing what their capabilities are uh, anytime you need to do something. So where I see people getting to after having studied computer science for a while is going from someone who just say uses a computer. You know, you use the programs that exist on the computer. You've got your, your Google and your Facebook and all that kind of stuff that you're using to being able to create those things. Being able to reach a point where you can say, a computer is a tool that can solve problems. I have these problems, I can make my computer into something that will help me solve these problems. And that's a big step, because it takes you from being a user to being a creator. And, and I think that's one of the most beautiful things about computer science, is it's something that, that empowers us beyond uh, the ability to just have a machine that does stuff for us uh, into a machine that does what we wanted it to do for us so and allows us to change what it does. Um, so what we've got for you at this point is to offer you this, this first step in learning about computer science. Um, uh, if you're going to be coming and studying with us uh, in, in computer science next year or any of the other computing degrees, um, we can take you further along this journey. But what I want to say is that there's so much more to learn uh, in computing. So there's, there's the basics I'm talking about is just, just getting computers to do things for us. But the ramifications and the, the, the things that flow on from that, uh, there are so many possibilities of what we can do here. So. I would say that computing at the moment is at the very front of the wave of technology that is changing the shape of human society. It's changing the way that our entire planet works. Um, and so there's so much in the way of possibilities for what can be done with computing in the near future. Um, and there's so many things that it could do for the world, and there's so many things it could do that is dangerous for the world and so we need to actually decide what we're going to do with this power that we have and for you as someone who has, is just about to start this journey is to decide what could we do and what are the interesting things we could do and could things be more interesting if your voice was added to to the chorus of people who are who are making software uh, to, to make the world better hopefully <laughs> but there's a lot of software out there that might not be making the world better for everyone just for some of us right so i think that this is a a pivotal moment in history where computers our reliance on them and our use of them changes us as a species changes our societies um, changes the way things work um, so hopefully 
what I am doing now is welcoming the people who in the future will have the voice and will have the control and will be the people who are actually using this technology to to do what you see as being how you want the world to change. So, hope to see you soon. Hopefully we can take these first few steps into computer science together. Um, my name's Mark. Hopefully, I, yeah. We'll get to hang out soon. We do lectures and live streams that look a lot like this. Um, so, yeah, hopefully welcome to UNSW and computer science. See you around.